Sometimes it's amazing how a small mistake in translation can lead to a big misunderstanding. Thai has two words, pa, which means enough, and di, which means good. And you can put them together in two different ways. And they mean two very different things. Di pa means good enough. Pa di means just right. Now di pa, good enough, is a term that the Ajans very rarely use. Pa di, just right, is something that they use a lot. John Fuen would talk about how he wanted your constitution to be pa di, just right, or your effort to be just right. Not so heavy that you can't maintain it, and not so light that it's not accomplishing anything. He said you want a certain steadiness and an appropriateness for the task. This is a point that many of the Johns made. When the Buddha is talking about the middle way, it's not a middling way. It's a way of practice that's just right for the problem at hand. And there are standards for what's just right. Come from their sense of the problem at hand. Many of us come to the practice because of problems in our daily life. Personal disappointments, disillusionment. I know in my own case it was my mother's death. And the circumstances around that really shook my worldview. When I found a John Fuang, I told him my problems. He was very good at helping me get over them. And I could have ended it right there. But he was also good at mentioning the fact that, and making me very alert to the fact that the problems go deeper than that. Our problem is we have a mind that keeps creating suffering, no matter how you look at the world, how well adjusted you are. There's going to be suffering, and the mind has many, many areas where it's out of control. which is a cause for worry when society begins to break down. You can start doing some really unskillful things. When the body gets old and sick and dies, you can do some very unskillful things if the mind is not really, really strong and really, really skilled. It requires a high level of skill and that just right for that high level of skill is a lot more demanding than we tend to think at least for at the very beginning. The best way to think about the concept of pawdy or just right is of a display I saw at a science museum one time. They give you some headphones and there were two tones, one in your left ear, one in your right ear. And you're supposed to adjust one of the tones so that it perfectly matched the other one. And then they would rate you as to how well you were able to match the tones. And a certain level of error was allowed for people who were good enough to be band directors. But if you wanted to be a symphony orchestra conductor, you had to be a lot more precise. Well, it's that precision that the Ajans are talking about. Because very subtle things are going to happen in the mind as you go through life and engage in aging, illness, and death, social disruption. And if you're not alert to the really subtle things, they're going to play all kinds of tricks on you. This is why the Ajans very rarely praise their students. As I said, I can count on the fingers of one hand the number of times I got praised by John Fuang in all the years I was there. Usually this was not good enough, that was not good enough, because he was trying to get me to raise my standards for what is just right, what is good enough. 
You know, it's not that he was trying to be harsh or nasty. He had my welfare in mind. He wanted me to raise my own standards. So my idea of good enough would be good enough to deal with the real problems in life. And so even though I was trying my best to please him, it was never, never quite good enough. And began to give up on the idea of pleasing him. And that's when I began to realize I had to learn how to please myself. But at the same time, I had to have high standards. When, when I was about to die, he wouldn't be there, and it wouldn't be a matter of pleasing him or not pleasing him. It would be a matter of having the skills needed. So when pain comes, illness comes, I'd be able to handle them well. This is the duty of any good teacher, to raise your standards and to give you the encouragement that, yes, you can do this. Whatever the problem is that brought you here to the practice, that's simply a doorway to the bigger problem of how the mind goes through life and how it creates new lives and new states of becoming. A problem that we usually don't think about, especially if we're coming from the West. But it's a problem that we should take seriously, because the human mind is the human mind, regardless of your cultural background, whether you believe in rebirth or not. It's going to happen. And it can happen in very unskillful ways if you're not careful. So as you're meditating, try to bring some care to what you're doing. And learn to have that sense of just right, both in your efforts and in the way you evaluate your efforts. Just right in the sense of encouraging yourself, but holding yourself to high standards. When you criticize yourself, criticize yourself in a constructive way. When you develop your confidence, try to do it in a way that's just right, too. There's the overconfidence that comes from getting rock star put on your papers when you're a child. They just whatever you do, the fact that you showed up should be rewarded. But when you show up for death, you're not going to be rewarded just for showing up. The reward comes when you're able to handle the fact that you're leaving the body, you're leaving your memories. You're leaving everything with which you've identified. What have you got left? You've got skills. Those will take you through. So as you practice, think about the various skills you've developed in the past. You have to develop a sense of just right, whether it's cooking, pottery, carpentry. Learning which principles are the principles that don't change. Learning the principles that can be changed, that are responsive to your ingenuity. Remind yourself of that question the Buddha has you ask every day. That sunset, this could be my last sunset, am I ready to go? And what would be required to be ready to go? That's what sets the, the standards. And so you want your practice to be good enough to meet those standards. That means pursuing that point of just right. Right on target. Able to identify problems. And work on the solution, and see problems where you didn't see them before. This was part of the Buddha's genius. And he started with those two teachers, and they were perfectly satisfied with their attainments. As far as they were concerned, they had, they had it. He could see, however, there was still a problem. 
his standards were higher than theirs, and that's why he became the Buddha. And they went off and they became eventually formless Brahmas, which is nice, but it's not the solution to the problem. So learn to see problems where you haven't seen them before, and also learn how to look for their solution. And keep your standards high, along with the conviction that this is not a task that's superhuman. Human beings have done it in the past. You're a human being. They've done it. You can do it too. But they did it by holding themselves to high standards, so that their sense of a just right aimed really high. And you want to aim high too. <laughs>